Time for a little quarterback training. One, three, five, and seven step drops, and so many more. Why are there so many drops for quarterbacks to learn, memorize, and perform? And why do we need them? I'm about to teach you coming up right now. Hey, everybody, welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former pro quarterback and quarterbacks coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com. Today, we're going to talk about some quarterback training and drops and how they fit into the game plan. But first, if you're new to the channel or if you love football, please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. That way you get notified anytime I have a new video coming out that can help you improve your football skills. Please give me a thumbs up if you're ready to learn about quarterback play and drops in the pocket. Leave me a comment down below because I'd love to hear from you. Today we're going to talk about one of our viewers' emails that they sent in asking about drops. And don't forget, share this out, this video with all your teammates, with your friends, family, anybody trying to learn about football or learn about the quarterback position. Share it out so they can get a little bit of football love too. Right now, let's talk about all the various drops that quarterbacks have to learn and why there are so many. I talked about it in the intro. There's one step drop, there's three step drops, there's five step drops, there's seven step drops. You have half rolls, rollouts, bootlegs, all kinds of different drop patterns that quarterbacks have to learn, memorize, and utilize during a game. Why is that? Well, we got a question about that from Chase C. He says, Hey, coach, I'm a freshman, new quarterback just learning, and coach is talking about three-step and five-step drops. Why are there different drops, and why do I have to learn them? For a young quarterback, that makes total sense because there's nothing in the game of football that's naturally intuitive. The reason that we have so many drops as quarterbacks that we have to memorize and use is because those drops, the different steps in each drops, time out with routes that we're using downfield. So different route concepts will time out with different sets of drops. They're all odd because we're going to start our drop with our strong foot, our passing foot or our back foot. And so that's why they're one, three, five, seven, and so forth. Your coach is probably working you over for a couple things. A, to get your drop steps right in terms of total number of steps. And he's probably working you over in terms of getting your drop depth. We have to drop away from center because we need to get depth from that line of scrimmage because we've got all those big guys up there blocking for us, trying to do, use pass protection, and we need to get some separation as a quarterback so we'll be able to throw that football downfield. When we use a, let's say, one-step drop, we're trying to get enough separation to be able to throw that ball and get it out quickly. So a one-step drop would be for something like a bubble screen to the outside or a tunnel screen or down the line screen to a receiver coming down the line. Something where we're throwing to the outside, not likely to throw a lot of balls over the middle with a one-step drop because receivers can't get that much depth in their route that comes together with your one-step timing. And so one-steps are for screens, they're for bubbles, maybe a quick shoot or a quick slant on the outside, something that's going to hit right now. And so that's where the one-step drop timing comes in. Three-step drops, more traditionally, go with routes like slants, quick outs, uh, hitches on the outside and the inside by slot receivers, something that's going to be five to seven yards downfield by a receiver. When you think about the depth that you're getting in your drops on a three-step drop, you should be getting about five or just over five yards in depth. They're going to be going to be running five to seven yards because they're sprinting straight ahead. And so your depth on your drop is going to correlate closely, but not exactly, with the depth that they're going to get in their route. So three-step drops, again, slants, hitches, quick outs, those kind of routes. Now we move up to the five-step drop. And right now I'm talking about under center stuff for quarterbacks. Five-step drop times out with routes like the out route, with routes like the curl on the inside, a bang eight or a seam post is a five-step drop. A lot of your vertical seam routes, like four verticals trying to hit those inside seams, perfectly match up with a five-step drop timing. A go route is a five-step, could be five-step hit and throw or five-step what I call a timing drop. Other people call it a five uh, rhythm drop. And so 
you hit that fifth step and you can let it go. Or because it's still a timing route for a quarterback, but you're going to throw it in a natural rhythm where you can hit and potentially hitch and throw for a little deeper ball. It can be a five timing or a five reset or five hitch throw. And so some routes have a little bit of wiggle room, like the go route. Some routes are right on time. You don't ever want to throw an out route to the outside receivers with a hitch in your throw because that gives you too much time for a really long throw for a quarterback for a DB to be able to drive in front of it. And so that is a pure timing route. A lot of the seam routes going up the seam where you're trying to hit receivers behind the linebackers but in front of the safeties, those are going to time out to a five-step timing drop as well. Now we're getting into the big boy drops, like a seven-step drop. Well, where does that fit into the picture? If you're running pure passing concepts downfield, a seven-step drop would work for something like a comeback, a corner route, sometimes a deep post if you're working underneath with your eyes trying to pull that safety up, or if you get pure man coverage, a seven-step drop would fit in there. And so some of those really deeper routes, longer developing routes, time out with seven-step drops. When we're talking about shotgun now, you're going to take two steps off from where you would be at from under center because you already have that five yards of distance in the shotgun snap for the quarterback. And the timing of that ball coming from the center to the quarterback is going to make up for those extra two steps. So if you're running a three-step drop from under center, now out of shotgun, that's going to become a one-step drop. Now, the one-step drops, obviously, you can't shorten those any, so bubble screen shoots, things that happen super quick, down-the-line screens, those remain one-step drops. But for stuff like slants, oftentimes, guys doing them out of shotgun can take a big one-step and hit that slant on time. Or you can add a false step to it sometimes. Some coaches teach this. I don't like false steps myself. But some coaches will teach adding that false step in so it times out into a two-step drop at that point. For your three-step drops in the shotgun, now that's going to time out with the five-step drops from under center and so on and so forth. You heard me talk about rhythm drops or timing drops. Those are when you hit your last step and throw. So it's if it's a three-step, you hit your third step and you drive back out. You load that back leg, you drive back out, and you throw that ball. So three hit and throw, three timing, three rhythm. That's all the same exact drop, but you're essentially, when you hit that final step, you're loading and throwing that football with no hitch. This is, it's important as a quarterback that you learn how to throw those rhythm throws because those oftentimes will get you out of trouble, will get to guys right on their break, and you'll be able to complete a lot more passes if you can accurately and successfully throw those rhythm throws. The next level of that would be reset throws or hitch throws it's all the same thing words don't matter it's just the action of what you're doing where you'll hit that last step in your drop a five-step drop in this case you don't from under center you don't ever hitch on a three-step drop in shotgun you will hitch on a three-step drop but you hit that last step and you take that one hitch forward and now you're throwing that curl route the basic cross or or deep over dover route a dig route those kind of things a sail route can happen off of a reset drop things like that where that's now going to time out where you hit five but you're still just a beat too early so you add that hitch in so that you can time up with where your receiver is breaking off their route so that's the reset drops and seven step drops are always reset drops or hitch drops I don't know of too many routes where the concept is built in that you hit seven on time and throw without taking a hitch drop. Those are generally deeper throws. You want to have that hitch, a little momentum moving forward so you can put more velocity on the ball and be more accurate. Then you add in stuff like half roll drops or full rollout drops. Those are also still designed to be on timing with whatever route concept you're running. But now, as part of the drop you're actually moving the pocket. So it changes the angle for the defensive lineman and for defense to have to attack. And oftentimes when teams get a lot of pressure, they'll go to half roll drops or full rollout drops to try to get that pressure out of the quarterback's face so they can throw more accurately. But those are still meant to be on time. If you're throwing a comeback to the outside, you can't take a three-step half roll 
and try to time out with a comeback, you're going to have to take a full seven step from under center half roll to time out with that comeback. Or from the shotgun, take a five step half roll, pull up and throw that comeback or that corner route because you have to be on timing with what he's doing. Otherwise, you're going to pull up. Now you've moved that aiming point, but guys can take a shot at you on that defensive line if you don't time out with your receivers. So all that said, the reason that we have so many different types of drops, one, three, five, seven, half roll, full roll, naked boot, play action, power pass, inside zone, RPO, is because coaches have designed the timing of whatever action or whatever drop that is to time out with the route concept that works downfield. You want to be making the throw as your receiver is either coming out of their break, maximum separation, or where they're coming into an open window so that you have a lane to throw that football. That's why there's so many of them. That's why it's so important that you learn them and that you run them properly and get yourself lots of depth so you have good vision downfield. So a little bit of quarterback training. Thought I'd throw that out there. A lot of information in that. Remember, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. That way, whenever we're talking football, you can be here for the conversation. Give me a thumbs up if you understand why we have so many different drops now and how they work within your offense. Please leave me a comment down below. Ask me any questions. Love to answer, answer questions for you. Young quarterbacks love helping you learn the game. And also, please share this video out. We'd love it if you share it with your teammates, your friends, your coaches, anybody who has an interest in football. We talk about all kinds of interesting stuff here at Elite Athletes TV. I appreciate you watching. Got a little quarterback training in tonight, hopefully improving your football skills and your quarterback skills. And I'll talk to you again soon.